and um, we'd probably want to call a roll now. Um, would you do that for us, Keith, or should I? I can do it. Um, Edgardo Gonzalez. I'm here. Richard Abusa. Here. Bev Bates. I'm here. Gordon Shaw. Here. Gwen Nabod. Okay. Uh, Ace is excused. Melissa Fowler. Here. Anna Schaefer. Here. And Spencer Gizzy Bates. Okay. Uh, I've not heard from them, so you do have court. Yeah. So randomly sit down there. Great. Um, okay. Um, so next on our agenda is the uh, public comment session. Uh, how many folks do we have here, Keith? Do we have any? Uh, looks like Laura Baker's here. Okay. Hi, Laura. Hi, everyone. How are you? Good. Oh, oh, how's it going? Good. Laura's Good. always here. I'm usually here. <laughs> um, I had forwarded something to Carmen, though, that I will just share with you, which is we have a CPA application in this round for uh, a project at 27 Crafts oh. Avenue that we had presented to the partnership. And we would be very grateful if any partnership members would like to attend that meeting in support or send an email to Sarah LaValle in support of that project. Okay. Great. Thank you, Laura. Sure. Um, Thank you. Uh, so next on our agenda is uh, for us to approve the minutes for the March 4th, uh, 2024, if we can have a motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. All, all those in favor? Oh, actually, I need to abstain. I'm not, was I even here last meeting? Um, I'll abstain just in case. Whoops, I don't think I was either. <laughs> but the minutes look darn good. I did read them, though. <laughs> Okay, so I think uh, with two abstentions, uh, the motion passes. Um, and... Oh, do we have someone? Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, so the next on our agenda is uh, to have a discussion with Carolyn Mish, the Director of Planning and Sustainability. Hi, Carolyn. Hello. Good evening, everybody. It's Great to see you. Um, I can't believe how much time has passed since the last time I've been here. Um, so lots have been lots has been going on, and um, I just thought it would be good to come in and talk about um, housing and development issues um, in general, and what's happening in the city, and particularly just sort of jump off of. Um, the conversation I think you all had at the last meeting about the King Street project is sort of um, a good place to um, identify um, opportunities for housing partnership to participate in those conversations. Um, talk about affordability and regulations on the horizon, um, conversations that might help in terms of about, uh, in terms of um, um, you know, barriers or things that um, we sort of seen and had conversations with developers about um, and advocacy and future roles. Um, before I launch into that, I do want to acknowledge um, Carmen Juno's departure. Um, it's, you know, she gave a lot to the city and through this housing partnership, and we really appreciate her um, work with the partnership. I was able to have um, a good long conversation with her a couple of weeks ago. And we talked about some of her sort of hopes and dreams and her frustrations with um, sort of the work that, um, you know, could be done, but maybe was not happening so much. So I just wanted to um, um, let you all know that we're, you know, our office is here um, to sort of take that 
feedback and really think about ways that we can modify some of the um, work that you all do and, you know, talk through some of the issues that certainly she raised. And um, so I think we had a really fruitful conversation relative to that. So um, we were certainly um, looking forward to, um, you know, helping identify those further and providing that support and structure um, to the partnership. Um, so having said that, I think um, I thought um, the conversations and there's been a community conversation as well as um, also in housing partnership about the development process and in particularly sort of using that um, proposed project on King Street as a jumping off point. Um, I thought it made sense to sort of um, look at that and look at the ways that maybe the partnership could participate in the conversation and sort of what, when it makes sense to hop in on that conversation and sort of what, um, what and where um, the um, um, feedback could be really beneficial. Um, as you probably know, sort of, just sort of setting the stage, um, you know, by the time a project gets to um, the place where someone's applying to the planning board, there's already been a lot of private investment in the property um, based on that um, framework of zoning that dictates the range of uses that are allowed on a property. Um, and so, those private investors have the opportunity to sort of pick and choose what makes sense for them, what they're, what are they, what are they proposing within the framework of the zoning. Um, and so when a proposal comes forward, the job of the planning board is to evaluate the project and how it meets the zoning. The board doesn't have the ability to, um, sort of pick and choose other components of the zoning to say, you know what, I'd really prefer that you choose this other thing that's allowed like a restaurant instead of um, an office on a particular property. Um, and, um, but the zoning is sort of set up with all of those rules to say, okay, if you pick a restaurant versus an office versus housing, here's how you have to design it. And here are the components of the site that have to be considered. Um, and so for when something's proposed as housing, um, you know, the board's going to look at how does it meet the requirements of development and um, as it relates to housing and how does the design work? Um, and, uh, but the board doesn't, can't really say, um, I think this housing project should be, um, subsidized affordable housing, or this other part of the project should be market rate. It's really, they're evaluating the use as housing on a piece of property and not, um, you know, what type of housing um, it is. It just, it needs to make as a use, it needs to meet the zoning. Um, so if there, and of course, you all know, I think you've had these conversations quite a bit, that the, the, the depth of our need for housing across the board, for example, is so great. And we need both subsidized housing, we need market rate housing, we need the whole range of market rate housing from you know, 120% of AMI all the way up to 175, 200, and, you know, really high-end housing. Um, the thing that is difficult is being able to um, try to determine or understand where each of those types of housing is going to take place and where investment by nonprofits or private developers is going to take place. Um, but nevertheless, we want to encourage that whole type of housing and a range of housing. Um, and so um, I think um, I, I think at this, both at the partnership level and also in the broader community, we've heard statements from folks um, saying, wouldn't King Street, you know, wouldn't that be a great place for housing, which 
I think from a staff level, we don't disagree. Um, unfortunately, since we're not the investors in the property, we don't really have much say in, you know, how that investment is going to be made. We're not running the performers. So we're, again, sort of making sure that whatever is proposed meets the criteria um, in front of the planning board. But if it were housing and if it was a different property, I think what's really valuable is to have support from a body like the partnership to come to the board and say, you know what, this housing may not be subsidized, deed restricted affordable housing. Nevertheless, we know we have this great housing need. And so, you know, we're gonna voice our support for that, for that type of housing. Um, and um, we've, I think there was an example um, when Keith sent you the materials, um, there was a project um, on the planning board agenda just two weeks ago, or actually last week, and um, Gwen um, came to the planning board hearing, and that was great. She voiced her support for that project on Day Avenue. Um, and that's, you know, um, a great example of, I think, that's bene beneficial, certainly for the board to hear, given that many times um, the neighborhoods surrounding these pro properties um, are concerned about change, they're concerned about what impact these housing projects have. So um, oftentimes the board is hearing um, sort of the most negative side of a project as opposed to hearing maybe some of the more balanced um, um, voices regarding the need for some of these, um, particularly housing. Um, so it was it's definitely helpful to hear from folks um, like Gwen who came um, to the meeting last week. That incidentally, that project is um, has been continued um, to April 25th and the planning board had a number of um, issues that they wanted the applicant to address. And again, sort of wanting to make sure that the pro proposed project meets the zoning and not necessarily, you know, the, um, the um, type of housing, um, this in this case, is, it's market rate housing, but they're very small units. So they fit sort of that small, small A affordable housing type and that we have not been getting a lot of. So they're small cottages and um, on one parcel. So they share a par property and for the moment, they're at least it's being proposed as rental units. So it's definitely a, a kind of housing that we don't see a lot of um, under construction or planned for in the city. So um, zoning certainly um, allows that flexibility, um, but again, we can, it's hard to predict who will sort of take that uh, flexibility that's presented in the zoning and run with it and propose a project. Um, so when we do, when we have set up regulations to sort of encourage a different type of housing, it's great to see that in fact, someone might want to try um, this kind, you know, this part of the zoning and sort of test that piece of the market. Um, the question did, as, as that's a good example, 39 Day Avenue, the housing um, there, again, as I said, is not proposed as being subsidized um, affordable housing. Um, and the question was raised about whether it would be affordable housing. And of course, as I mentioned before, that's not really um, a subject. It's not, we don't require affordable housing in every project and it's really sort of left up to the um, developers to determine what the best use is on the property. Um, we've had a little bit, uh, we've had one, probably in the last 20 years, I think we've only had one private sector developer um, come through a development review process where th there was a requirement that the developer provide affordable housing units to meet the 10% um, of the units as, as affordable. And that was based on the subdivision rules at the time. And that was at Emerson Way, actually. And um, as you, uh, many of you probably know, that, um, became a very complicated and I would say ultimately did not 
pan out the way that it was originally intended because the subsidies that the developer had to make to build those affordable units, um, meaning subsidized from the other um, market rate units, um, made it um, cost prohibitive for, for the developer to do it the way that I think they originally intended. So, um, you know, we can create flexibility to incentivize um, units that are more affordable, but it's um, really hard in our market to sort of dictate that or require a certain number of units to be affordable in every project. Um, it's just a different kind of project when you have an applicant coming forward and building um, market rate housing versus someone like Valley um, coming to build only affordable housing um, because, you know, each one has their area of expertise and it's such a complicated process to develop, you know, deed restricted long-term affordable housing that those folks who aren't accustomed to that um, find it um, almost nearly impossible to accomplish. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to sort of um, talk about a bit about that and sort of the whole context of um, our housing, um, our push for new housing and how important it is to have those supporters at sort of every level, not just, um, and of course, supporting the affordable housing, but also the other types of housing. Um, and I think the other piece that I thought would be um, helpful to sort of talk about um, is the, you know, and acknowledge, I know that you all have had a um, longstanding um, sort of back and forth conversation about how to encourage more affordable housing units to come online, support the affordable housing developers like Valley um, to build new units. And, um, you know, we've, uh, um, I know this body has talked a lot about the um, of sort of reinvigorating the affordable housing trust as it relates to this new potential real estate transfer fee. And you've heard from Keith and I think the mayor and certainly um, I think I have um, spoken about this as well, that we think that potentially the real estate transfer fee is a good source um, to add to what we have um, and potentially enhance the CPC funds in one pool as opposed to sort of splitting that pool into two entities with the affordable housing trust because of all the administration and overhead that that um, mandates. Um, and, you know, we want to make sure that we're putting as much of the limited resources that we have into one pool and not create more impediments for the applicants coming forward and sort of choosing between one pool of funding versus the other or having to go to both um, bodies to do that. Um, so I just I wanted to um, sort of, um, yeah, I know that we haven't, um, we don't know yet about the final language in that real estate transfer um, um, fee, but um, we've done a little bit more looking and sort of how different communities have used their affordable trust and specifically in Amherst, you know, Amherst has both the CPC and the Affordable Housing Trust. But in, um, when you look at the numbers, Northampton has really spent more um, to create affordable housing and has created more units of affordable housing over sort of the last five, five or so years, um, just utilizing CPC um, versus Amherst is using sort of both um, pots of funding. So, um, I know that, um, you know, that's one piece of the conversation. And I think um, it would be great to sort of um, talk about um, other ways that the partnership might want to sort of look in the future about um, providing and supporting um, housing of all levels across the board. And I'd love to, you know, have a conversation and Keith and I are here to sort of 
talk through and strategize about the best way to, to um, ensure that you feel like your voice is heard in those housing discussions and when they go to the planning board and so forth. Um, and so I think advocacy, of course, is really important. Um, it particularly, I feel like we're getting into this period of time where we have been over the last several years where um, change has been more intensely felt by neighborhoods. Um, and that sh you know, showed itself in these projects where um, people um, really want to have um, sort of hold on to what they know in their neighborhoods and are concerned about these changes. And I think bringing that sort of broader perspective that the partnership might have about um, the need for housing and who is unhoused and who needs housing and how that is a, a positive for the whole community um, certainly I think would be greatly beneficial. Um, for the board and for the city um, as a whole. Um, so I guess I would, um, you know, I don't know if anybody has questions or if you want more detailed information about, um, about some of the things that we've been working on um, and looking at in terms of the regulatory framework and trying to address some of those issues that we've learned from this, um, from the city council's forum that was held about a year ago, I guess, November and January, they had sort of two spotlight sessions about housing because the community resources committee was really concerned about that and wondering if there were more regulatory changes that might be appropriate to address that. Hi, so Carolyn, um, I did have a chance to look at a little bit of that video. Um, it was really eye-opening um, about some of the stats that uh, Catherine Rate uh, brought forward about um, uh, just the 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 the, um, the crisis that that we're having with housing. Um, but what since those two highlights um, sessions, and I'll. I'll, I'll try to look for the other one uh, to try to get a little bit of an update on that too. Have you seen or noticed anything uh, moving forward either from uh, the planning department or the city or anybody working on some of those things that were discussed? Because I haven't gotten to the part where they started talking about solutions. Yeah, I mean, really, I think the the idea was to sort of Oh, to really have the conversation about what are the really difficult components of housing development, you know, the financial, the um, and if there are regulatory barriers, what are those? And then also the construction costs, which are sort of the biggest. Um, and, you know, Laura can speak to this probably um, far better than I can, but I don't know that, you know, we sort of felt that the, this was, coming it was closer to the end of COVID. So there was still this sense that, oh, those prices will probably drop a little bit um, because we can come off of that COVID sort of high. Um, but from what I understand, those things have not changed significantly. There's been some leveling out, but the construction costs are still high. Um, I think that the other piece that, um, sort of that was important about that is to make sure that every that as many people as possible were um, um, could listen to that and could sort of think about all the issues relating to not only the housing deficits that we have, but also the cost of housing and then the most efficient way to provide housing in Northampton and to meet our carbon goals. Um, so that there could potentially be more um, support or more, um, I guess, one interest for the developer the developer community to understand that, you know, Northampton wants to solve or help solve this problem, but also for residents in Northampton to sort of maybe get a better understanding of, of what those needs are. 
Um, since that time, we haven't made any specific regulatory changes, but we've had projects that have come forward that continue to have, um, you know, make, create angst in the neighborhood. And um, I think that it's my sense that um, people generally support the idea of welcoming everyone and welcoming new housing, but there is still that disconnect about how sort of we're all in this together and we need to solve the housing and provide good housing where it makes sense based on the rules that we set up as a community because we say, yes, we want housing, but we want it our way. We want it designed the way we say we want it designed and we want it to be the, you know, up to the densities that we allow if it's built in the right way. So I guess I would say, I think there's still work to be done in terms of bringing along um, people in the community as it relates to housing that might um, be proposed in their neighborhood. Um, I, does anyone else? Have, oh, thank you, uh, Beth. Um, I'm very interested in your takeaways from the developer meeting from a year ago. I have gathered from Edgardo that I could watch a video and learn a fair amount about it. So I won't take time with that. Um, I need to be personally honest and say that my experience in the last few weeks is that um, what we were doing was getting ahead of what other people wanted us to be doing. Um, and I don't, I don't know Ooh, I don't know if it's the mayor. I don't know if it's you, Carolyn. Um, but uh, without having had an uh, in-depth conversation or even any conversation with Carmen, um, it's my sense that um, we are perceived as having gotten uh, sort of off base. And if that's the case, I would like to hear it. And if it's not the case, I would also like to hear it. Um, and... Uh, Finally, I'd like to hear, and I don't know if you're the spokesperson on this topic or if it is the mayor, but what do you want us to do other than show up at meetings and say yes to something that has some affordability? Um, I don't, I, I guess, um, I don't think any, I guess the answer is no. I don't think the housing partnership is off base. I think, and I don't know as a totality if, you know, every, you know, if that, if everyone can be lumped together in a group. I think that, um, you know, from what I understand, there was um, continued um, interest in um, understanding the housing market and, wanting to do, I understand there was this interest in having a developers forum. And so I don't think that's off base at all. I think that's, that's great. I think that um, what I think would be beneficial is for the partnership to see what conversations the city council had a year ago that's very much like what you were thinking, I think. And I may be putting words in your, <laughs> in your um, heads, but it seems that there's, um, you know, continuity with sort of what you were thinking and then what city council um, community resources committee was thinking a year ago. And that's why they pulled that together. So um, I think that it made sense for you all sort of as a group to sort of look at what the community resources um, committee pulled together for this um, um, housing conversation and then say determine you know were there any gaps would you like to have different conversations about that because I think you know you um, has historically and sort of this is one of the things I talked with Carmen about is um, you know she felt like um, she would love to see the partnership get into um, more of an advocacy role and whatever part that takes I think that sort of um, 
I think historically um, um, been a good place, a policy and advocacy role for the partnership. Um, and looking at potential other things the city could do to sort of break down barriers for housing and not just focused on affordable housing, but I think housing across the board because it affects, you know, the subsidized affordable housing as well. Um, I think that, um, you know, and this is not, you know, I think you've heard from staff, including the mayor, about this um, idea that um, we don't believe that the Affordable Housing Trust is, is um, an entity that should be reinvigorated just because of the sheer administrative um, work it takes to develop that, a completely new committee and new um, administrative staff when we have the Community Preservation Committee. So um, I think that energy would be um, really well served to sort of think about other ways to reduce those barriers to development if there are, and then also, again, sort of put on that advocacy hat. But I certainly wouldn't say, um, you know, so I think that's um, um, subject to conversation. And we would like to be, I think that we could, um, the other thing I talked to Carmen about is sort of the structure and support that um, our office provides, and I think we could do more of that. Um, and she agreed, she thought that would be um, helpful. Um, if I could just um, add a couple more thoughts. Um, one, I have worked and lived in this area for many years of my life, but I only recently moved back. And um, I honestly, and I don't mean this in any critical way, I'm trying to understand what the vision is for Northampton on the topic of housing. Um, I am on the CPA committee and in neither organization did I experience any kind of orientation or here's what we're about, here's what we do, here's the sort of general planning uh, process and or document that we rely on. Um, and that doesn't mean there isn't a vision. It just means that it's not very ex accessible. At least it, I don't feel like it has been to me. Um, I spent my life as a nonprofit developer and it is incredulous, quite frankly, I mean this respectfully to hear that money's not an issue. Money is the number one issue that is preventing the development of any kind of housing that has an affordability component. Um, it's gotten worse. It may continue to get worse. The bond bill isn't gonna solve the problem because the problem's getting worse. <laughs> um, and so I, I guess I, I have watched the, the, the people who are in the Hollywood squares here um, struggle to find a meaningful way to help solve this problem. Cause why hang around spending your nights doing this if you don't feel like you're making a difference. And to the extent we've gotten off track, you know, I think we all wanna get back on track and I think we wanna know, but it's very unsatisfying to not be able to advocate um, approaches that we've spent a lot of time talking about and think make a whole lot of sense, like adding more money to the pot or thinking about inclusive zoning, um, or thinking about re real estate transfer tax, put the money where you want. Uh, I don't think there's anybody here who necessarily wants to run the housing trust. I, well, I speak for myself. So the mm -hmm. issue of administrating more money seems to me the easiest problem to solve, but having more money will uh, allow Valley CDC and others to do more than one project every two years. Um, you know what the CPA numbers look like. Way more money goes to city-owned buildings than it goes to affordable housing. Way more money goes to conservation, and that's great, than affordable housing. Um, way more money is in danger of going to pickleball than affordable housing. And pickleball is great. But just, I'm sorry, I'm going off, and I need to shut up right now. 
please forgive me, but I feel very strongly about this, as you can tell. Yeah. I mean, I will say, I think we probably need to get you all numbers about the distribution of dollars in CPC. I don't, I, I know I didn't say money's not the problem. <laughs> um, I think that um, find, certainly finding sources of money and maybe the real estate transfer fee is it. What I was suggesting is to pool it in one place instead of splitting it um, is, is a better use of resources. Um, and, and that's all, but I think, um, I think that, um, absolutely, you know, trying different things, testing things out and giving suggestions about certain approaches makes sense. There are also many other issues that come into play when evaluating whether one strategy is, um, uh, will work in Northampton versus another strategy. But thanks for that. Um, thank you, Beth. Um, all right, so this is this is a little bit difficult for me because I'm in a in this new role, um, just kind of falling into, and uh, I see. Um, I, I was actually a little bit upset with um, with Carmen because uh, she kind of jumped ahead of me. Um, I have actually <clears throat> been wanting to step back more rather than step up. Um, and part of that reason is because as a, as, as a facilitator, you want to play more of a, you know, um, facilitator role and, um, and kind of step back a little bit and be a little bit more um, neutral. Um, but I see some hands up and I would love to uh, hear what, um, uh, what folks and concerns people have. Um, and uh, I will save my comments for, for the end. But I do have some comments and I think... Um, there's some things that we can work with here. Um, I saw Richard's uh, hand up first. Richard. Okay, a uh, couple things. Uh, Bev, I don't think you should feel badly about what you said. I think you were extraordinarily on point and uh, don't feel reluctant about expressing it. I And also, Edgar, I, I was a chair for a long time. I understand the need to step back, but I think in this circumstance, at this moment, you should feel uh empowered to speak whatever is on your mind or in your heart uh, i have a brief procedural or informational question for keith and then i have a question for carolyn keith did we get sent links to the community resource committee tape did you send those to us uh, when i sent the agenda in the minutes part of this meeting i put the link for the November 22nd or November 21st, 2022 meeting. I looked in earnest for this second meeting and I couldn't find that link. So um, we just got it this recent minutes and we hadn't had it any time before then. Uh, the developers conference or the minutes? The developers conference. The yes, link. I, I sent along with the agenda for this meeting last Monday or Tuesday. I'm talking about way back when, when it happened or after. I, I don't believe I sent it because I don't I don't remember it happening. Um, but and I would have you, to search. And, I would have to go back and search into yeah, my. I, I couldn't find it. And we didn't get noticed about the meeting that it was happening, that something on in our sort of. No, I don't recall it at all. So just I'm just. Checking on that. That's a separate discussion. Carolyn, um, I'm not sure I heard the answer to Bev's question, which is, you know, how do you see our role? You know, you you've been in planning for quite a while. You you interfaced with us in various ways. You know, uh, I, I think, you know, we are at a point where we're trying to understand some things. And I think it's very germane to our process, which I think we, we're we certainly not going to resolve tonight, but it's going to be helpful for us to get some sense from you and probably others in city government, but you're here. How do you see our role? Um, yeah, I mean, I think primarily, I, I think it's important to have um, an advocacy role. So um, getting, you know, getting information out about the importance of housing in general, not just affordable housing, but housing of all types. And that could be not just 
necessarily coming to um, public um, hearings about housing, but I could see um, different moments during the year where just generally participating in, you know, whether it's going to other committee meetings or even setting up, I mean, I'm pulling some of this stuff out, but just sort of, I don't know if there's, um, you know, at the farmer's market or some other venue where the conversation about housing can sort of be ongoing. It could be in conjunction with maybe one of the city council subcommittees, if that made sense, to sort of have regular conversation, public conversation about the importance for housing. Um, I think, you know, advocating for, um, which you're already working on, I know, um, advocating for um, legislative changes, if that makes sense, um, and or local um, uh, regulations if in concert with, you know, our department or city council or what have you. I think um, sort of it's a range of things that um, could be beneficial. Um, okay, so I thought I had seen Gwen with her hand up. Did you want to speak? And I know I see uh, Spencer as well. Yeah, so I almost I almost feel like I need to go back and look at the mission of the Northampton Housing Partnership because I've always assumed it's for low and affordable housing. Um, and it doesn't mean that, you know, all housing is not important, but I think where money is always falling short and where there's always pushback is when it comes to low and affordable housing. Um, and not just in Northampton, but, you know, across New England. And so, and especially in Massachusetts. And um, so then the other thing that I'm thinking about is, um, you know, looking at the mission of the housing partnership, that mission has changed over time. And, you know, like I'm thinking about that fair housing opportunity um, report that was issued in 2018. And I think that we, um, I don't know if that's the kind of advocating that you mean, um, or if it's like, I, I'm, or, you know, keeping an eye out for land or um, uh, keeping a, an, an eye open for houses that are up for sale um, or attending, um, you know, city meetings, you know, um, for the planning and development. Um, committee uh, to the hearings and whatnot, um, just to say that we're in support of housing. Um, so yeah, I'm just a little bit yeah. confused. Yeah. So, you know, the original, um, the mission, and I mean, the partnership's role is to as you said, represent interests of people with low and moderate income, the housing and real estate industry um, more broadly, um, and then boards and commissions involved in housing policy or projects. So, um, you know, yes, the focus is, you know, supporting and, and advocating for um, affordable housing and, you know, that's subsidized um, deed restricted affordable housing, but also the housing and real estate industry in general. Um, but I, I see that, um, you know, I think, I think people, I think to the extent that you all can be sort of a voice, not everywhere all the time, but I think people, um, when there's not a housing conversation going on, sometimes they sort of forget about that and then something all of a sudden happens and they're and in the neighborhood and um, it's probably could be beneficial for people to think, oh yeah, wait a second, I do. I understand this bigger context that we have this issue. We're way behind in our deficit, you know, in terms of a de deficit in housing. Um, so, I think that also helps. I know you um, 
it's sometimes hard to commit to other activities outside of, you know, your monthly meetings, but it's certainly, um, I think that there could be some synergies there in looking at ways to um, connect with other groups to talk about that. So like, for example, I'm thinking of the other night with the, the, um, the, the hearing with the water, the water, the concerns about the water. And like, I did have a lot of thoughts about that. I did have thoughts about that. Like I was thinking, okay, what if it was like a permeable surface instead of pavement or, you know, I have thoughts about that, but you know, and, and so, um, but I don't, I don't know how that could make people feel better about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. I think is, I think, um, you know, that's the board's, the planning board's job is to sort of think about the engineering of it and determine whether or not there's there a, a project is meeting the zoning. But the other piece, the sort of, you know, the setback piece, like, oh my goodness, this is small unit housing. This fits a niche that we don't have. It's very important to support this, um, you know, but also we wanna make sure it meets all the regulations. But sometimes people forget when they get so focused on, you know, the stormwater runoff and um, the design and the parking layout that um, they lose the sight of, wow, this is a great housing project. And, you know, this is something that would be really beneficial for the city and could be a model for other projects. So that kind of voice from the partnership is, is helpful, I think. And I know you said that at the at the meeting. So, yeah, I know. I hope I said that because <laughs> it really is a cool project. Okay. Um, uh, thank you, Gwen. Uh, Gordon, and then Spence, please. Uh, you're muted. Yeah, I had to find my my mouse. So if 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 the if the desire is to have all the housing money be placed in one pot and sue so us, why not the trust? I mean, it seems, I mean, it's, the argument for the trust is that it provides a more flexible mechanism for funding opportunities. And it uh, it also, you know, with the CPC, wonderful people staff it, but there's competing interests going on there. We've done a lot of research around trust. We've talked to other communities, we've had presentations, um, and not once has anyone mentioned that the administrative cost is being a barrier or a big, or a big burden. Um, in fact, we've heard that certain communities are using their, putting their CPA money into trusts to, for the very reason that it provides a place for opportunity for experts, uh, people who are, who are more focused on what is needed for affordable housing to be able to respond in real time. So I'm not convinced yet. I haven't seen yet why you keep throwing up that it's an administrative burden. I've been around the partnership now for 15 years, almost 15 years. And I remember when the trust was active and it was using to support Hathaway, what is now Hathaway Farms. And never once did we ever discuss or talk about how that was an administrative burden for the city. It just got, the money ran out. And so it kind of just fell to the wayside. So I'm just still curious about why that continues to be an argument against it. Yeah, I mean, that was certainly before the CPC ever existed. Um, as you know, I mean, you're a body of um, 11 members. It's hard to keep membership even on the housing partnership. It's hard to keep membership on every single board across the city. So creating another board, um, another sort of accounting and legal um, review and tracking the funds um, separately, is it creates another, it's sort of, it's just creating another division within the city. And at this moment, um, it, and for a long time now, now that we have CPC, where that is already established, I think the money that would come that's dedicated for affordable housing from any transfer fee or any other source that um, specifically allocated for housing, would be reviewed under those rules. So it's not, um, there's still flexibility. I mean, CPC has a lot of flexibility with how money is, is used and what kinds of projects it can be used for. Um, so I, I think that, you know, creating a whole new body to review that is a burden. And it's also a burden to keep, um, it's a burden to keep staffed and to keep committee members. 
members on it. And when the reality is, I mean, if you look at, say, Amherst as an example, Amherst has both CBC and Affordable Housing Trust. They're not putting as much money as our CPC is into housing. And so you have so and then you'd also create a burden for the applicants because we're not talking about a lot of money. I mean, it takes, you know, you've heard from Valley that and um, other places that, you know, costs about um, $500,000 per unit to create. So the amount of money that's going to be available will not, um, it makes it harder if someone's got to come to this entity to get, you know, $50,000 and this other entity to get another 50,000 when you could put it together and they could get 100,000, go to one stop location and then move on with their project or whatever the funding is. Uh, Gordon, I see. I still see your hand up. Did you want to speak again? Sorry, I, I I didn't lower it. No, it's okay. Okay. I hear okay. what you're saying, Carolyn, but I still question whether it really is the administrative burden that you that you're pre presenting it to be. <laughs> okay. Um, thanks, Gordon. Uh, Spencer, please. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Sorry to be late there, um, first and foremost. Uh, and I just wanted to add my comments as a brand spanking new housing partnership member um, in on. And I have no real history with any trust or anything like that. Um, but I will be the first of, of probably 11 people to say that I didn't get on this committee to to help you know, developers throw down another subdivision. And I and I, I think that would be reiterated uh, across the board and that I would simply respectfully ask the city council or the mayor or someone to come up with some guiding principles for us to, to follow and give us something quite honestly to do because at least in my very short time here, all I've heard is, you know, what we've done a lot of work on this trust. It sounds great. And then if the city doesn't want to do it, that's fine. But we should have some, you know, to get, I don't know what happened, but I feel like I want to help the city with housing. I don't want to like go to the farmer's market and tell people it's a great place to live because guess what? Everybody already knows it's a great place to live. That's why we have a housing problem. Uh, and so if there is some way to give a group of 11 highly committed people, more so than me, so 10, some so, sort of like marching orders that we could work on, I think would be so much more valuable than us trying to come up with, you know, I all I could think of my experience with the trust, and the reason why I thought it was a great idea is because it was a group of people saying, listen, we got a problem. How are we going to fund this? We need money. Here's a way to get money. Here's a way to do it. And if it's an administrative hassle, great. We need to know that. But that's that's just my comments. Is that we we kind of really need a directed mission uh, to because there's some really smart people here. Uh, to not me, but some really good housing people uh, that could be really helpful. Thank you so much, Spence. Um, uh, Spencer. Um, I. And so I see Richard's hand up and Gwen, and um, I just wanted, um, I uh, patiently waited for my turn. Um, and I really do want to speak, um, and I definitely want to speak about um, the elephant in the room, right? Which is, um, we have sort of become a group, um, and I think Spence, you said it better than, better than me, but um, that's partly the reason and it's coming up. I'm gonna talk about um, um, my future in, in, in the partnership um, in, the, in the next couple of items. Um, but um, that's partly the reason why I will uh, be looking to actually step all the way down um, in the next coming months um, is because uh, I, I am ready to rock. I am ready to do some work. I, I I don't necessarily want a seat at the table anymore. I want to, if there's an action oriented 
um, thing that I can help the partnership with. I'm here for y'all. And the same thing, same conversation I've had recently with the housing authority. Um, and actually a lot of good things came out of that conversation because um, that's what we want to do. We want to do, we want to put in some work to help uh, with the crisis. And I agree with Spencer. We have a, I, when I look around this room, it's like, oh my goodness, talk about expertise. Talk about, I look at Richard, it's like management, ownership, like he knows what he's talking about. You know, when I look at Gordon, you know, legal stuff, when I look at, you know, so many people here and, and how they have um, contributed to, to the partnership, um, including uh, Carmen, I'm sad to, to see her go. Um, I'm not sure what, uh, you know, why she felt um, um, like she wasn't doing her best or something like that, but she, I thought she, she was great at uh, sort of uh, steering us um, and, um, and being a leader. And so I think that we have just felt like um, we have come up with ideas and, and things at the higher level have been like, but wait a minute, no, but wait a minute, no. And so obviously there's a there's a gap, there's a disconnection, especially when you look at the fact that um, we didn't know there was a talk with developers. That's why we thought, oh, this is a great idea. We need to talk with developers. We didn't know uh, that there was a meeting uh, at city council and these things were discussed. I'm telling you, I only watched 20 minutes of the two hour um, session uh, that y'all had. And I have learned more in those 20 minutes about housing in Northampton that I've learned in the last five years. That was, it, that was amazing. That was a great meeting and I look forward to watch the rest. Um, but we want to be more significant and more uh, play a, a more of a, a participatory role in the city government when it comes to uh, particularly low income and affordable housing development. I do hear a lot lately, not just low income, not just affordable. And I want to be, I, I want to caution us that, you know, let's, let's try to keep the focus on the affordable housing that we need. I read on the, um, uh, one of the stats was that by 2025, if we want to get out of this crisis, we need to build 19 to 20,000 new units by 2025, so already 2024. Uh, that's not going to happen. But, um, you know, to the topic of the of, of Municipal Affordable Housing Trust, uh, some of the stuff that we uh, looked at when we did some research is, is gap funding is it, it would be a huge deal uh, to have another um, another fund in the city that could be just specifically focused on housing um, and um, I think the cost of having staff um, uh, be you know coming up with staff additional staff to staff that um uh would be a huge investment especially with all the all the funding that's available out there now for municipal housing uh fund trust and how we see how other cities uh really do a good job at um at uh at working with both uh so that's sort of uh my piece is that um you know um i've sort of felt and i think other folks here too have felt restricted as to how much we want to do, but also that disconnection. Uh, we want to be invited uh, to stuff like this. We want to. Uh, we want the city to come to us and 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 ask us, "What do you guys think about this?" You know, uh, it's not just about us offering our expertise, but whenever the city feels like or think that we could be useful, reach out to us more. So I think that's kind of like where, where I've been feeling. Uh, that uh, the disconnect is. And, you know, um, I see Hannah's uh, hand raised. Um, I will stop for now and just uh, uh, let Hannah and then uh, Richard go. Yeah, this, uh, first of all, Carolyn, I just want to say thank you also for being here. I feel like, you know, this is, this feels like a moment of 
kind of transition for me on the housing partnership. I think that a lot of us have, well, I'll, I'll speak for myself. I mean, I think that I've felt frustrated over the past going on two years now as um, just as, you know, now, a, well, I still consider myself a relatively new member, but now I joined in 2020. That doesn't make me a really new member anymore and uh, have felt limited and confused because I joined wanting to help. And, um, you know, for me, the most recent significant thing that I feel like we've done that made me feel really empowered was the broker fee ban that we have in the it's just sitting in the legislator legislature right now and I know that things move so slowly and I keep checking in on that and for me this conversation is really crystallizing the idea that that money feels like it's the missing component for me now in terms of like what the affordable housing trust fund were it reinvigorated and if it could be staffed like it just it seems like the missing piece for me in terms of giving giving me a feeling that there are projects that we can be working on um, instead of just what I do feel like I end up doing from month to month, which is kind of giving the thumbs up to things that come through our path and they're, they're great projects, but to just say like, yes, well, of course we endorse this affordable housing unit. Like why, why would we say no to that? And I would love to feel like there were, there were things that we could be envisioning. Um, so, you know, again, this is, it's easy for me to say, I likely wouldn't be the person staffing it, but I, I feel the, I feel the frustrations of everybody and just like wanting to be able to do something and have some projects that that we can be sort of envisioning and and throwing our weight behind. Um, but I just I also just really appreciate hearing from everybody tonight. So uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Hannah. Uh, Richard? Uh, yes, uh, I, I echo Hannah's uh, appreciation of Carolyn's coming here. And I know you have the complexities of your role. And so you know, when I say whatever I'm going to say, you know, it, it it comes with the understanding that you're not necessarily a free actor and you also have other things that you have to shepherd and do. But let me just speak to a couple things that have come up. I've now been on the partnership for over 34 years um, and I've seen vicissitudes of uh membership involvement and difficulty getting members on board. I've served on another town board. I do understand the complexities of that. But right now, and I think you're hearing it, one of the reasons why people are confused and not necessarily energized is because we have been, and I'll be blunt here, cut adrift. Not long ago, the city hosted a community forum to get the community involved in supporting housing in Northampton, which is certainly a wonderful thing to try and get the citizens involved. And not once in that entire presentation did the housing partnership come up. You know, a longstanding volunteer community citizen board that's working on the same goals. And, you know, it echoes back to, you know, if the city council is going to be working on an issue of housing, which is of critical importance, and they certainly should be because they have a different role, to not bring in in some way, shape, or form the housing partnership so there can't can be a synergy just strikes me as sending a really horrible message about uh, how this board uh, fits or doesn't fit or somehow has gotten misaligned. And I think we have some discussions among ourselves about this, but we actually do have a role. And there was initial enabling legislation for the housing partnership that passed city council, and we've talked about it, and that got modified. And that's another issue that, to my mind, uh, is probably worth revisiting, but there is a role. And in fact, Carolyn, you mentioned that there are limitations quite appropriately on what the planning board can do in terms of, you know, the bully pulpit for affordable housing when a developer 
comes in. And in fact, that was one of the specific things that the housing partnership was set up to do, to be uh, by the original statute, to come into the process right at the very beginning and at least make developers and everybody in every department of uh, the city aware of how all the various decisions that might not obviously affect housing, in fact, do. And um, I don't think you're going to have any trouble staffing a house, uh, getting membership on a housing partnership if we are supported and engaged in doing things that are meaningful. And also speaking to the notion of, um, I can tell you if people feel like they are handing out money, I'll just be crass about, you know, what a trust fund would do. People want to do that because they can tangibly see the effect of their actions. And in fact, there's no reason why they're, you know, there are many boards that have overlapping memberships, and there's no reason why there can't be an overlapping membership between the housing partnership and a housing trust fund. It's not like you're looking for a whole new pool. So I, I'm, I'm heavily siding with Gordon that I am way not convinced um, that the housing um, trust fund administrative costs are high. And lastly, and... Uh, I don't think I want to discuss it tonight, but I, I, I do want to sort of hang it out there in some way is I have seen over my tenure many styles and levels of staffing for the partnership. And uh, that has a dramatic effect on the membership and what we can accomplish and how things work. And um, that is something that I, I, we probably have to be our own advocates for, but, but, um, uh, I, I think you will find the limited role that you articulated for the housing partnership might not be the best use of our resources. Sorry about being so long winded. Uh, thanks, Richard. I appreciate your comments. Uh, thank you, Richard. Um, is there anyone else that would like to uh, speak on this? Um, if not, obviously, uh, Carolyn, um, uh, you have the floor as well. Um, and uh, and we, you know, we or we can move on to the next couple of items that we have on our agenda. Um, thank you all for participating in this. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for having me and um, thanks for the conversation. I know you have other things on your agenda on your agenda for tonight, so I don't want to take over the <laughs> entire agenda. I want you to make sure you get to those things. So, um, but I do I really appreciate um, your comments and feedback. Thanks so much, Carolyn. Um, so moving to our next agenda, I think we touched up on um, our next agenda item a little bit, um, which is to discuss our goals and housing partnership uh, mission. I don't, I'm not sure if perhaps that's a good conversation to have today. Uh, Time-wise, uh, we should uh, move that back to next, um, next meeting and process a little bit of uh, our discussion here today, but it's up to, it's up to us together. I'm not going to make that decision. Uh, what do y'all think? I don't think we have enough time to, to do give that justice. So I think maybe we should just think about that being a topic for our next meeting and we should take a moment at the next month to think about wh what we're doing and bring our thoughts to that next meeting. And you've got a few other agenda items that are probably gonna take up the next 20 minutes. I agree with Gordon. Okay. Do we have a motion and a second to just move that forward? Yeah, please. Motion to move it forward. I'll, I'll second that. Beth, did you Could want to... I um, just... Oh, uh, all in favor, sorry. Aye. Aye. Okay, that passes unanimously. I'm wondering if... I feel like we made a lot of statements and without being specific, sort of asked for some stuff. 
And are we expecting a response or is that it? Um, so I, I, I mean, I think that um, it's definitely a lot to process for everyone, including uh, Carolyn. Um, and uh, I am very grateful um, that she uh, came and talked to us. Um, um, quite frankly, um, the more that can happen, uh, the better. Um, and uh, and I think that, you know, uh, we can move things forward a little bit more cohesively if, if we have uh, just a, a uh, can get on the same page with uh, what the city uh, wants us to do, what we want to do. Uh, so let me just be a little bit more blunt. Um, it, it, for me, it's a decision about whether this is what I want to do with my time. And so if it takes six months to have an awareness of whether it is or isn't, that's going to feel not good to me. Um, but I don't know what the shortcut is. <laughs> um, and so perhaps part of Gordon's um, suggestion that we defer might include um, if we could write our job description based on the parameters that we understand are, are real and certainly with Gordon and Richard helping us re remember the past, um, is that what we should do? And should we send that to the mayor or, I mean, I don't know. One of the last things Carmen did is invite the mayor to a meeting and never heard from her. Yeah. So I would not to totally derail, but Bev, I a hundred percent agree with, I think your undertone here that in my experience, we ain't going to hear anything. Right. I mean, her job was to come here take some flack and go back. We're not gonna get yeah. anything substantive from city government between now and our next meeting. No offense, Keith, because I know you work for the city. So I'm fully on board with your idea of writing our own job description <clears throat> because I think we, at the very least, need to let the folks at city council know that, you know, I don't want, I didn't sign up to help Wright brothers build their next fricking village hill. That's not what I'm here for. You know, like we don't need, I was actually honestly a little pissed off that she suggested that I go sit around and remind people about housing in Northampton. Like we don't need to freaking remind people about housing in Northampton. Like the housing market here is absolutely batshit crazy, forgive my language. But it's, and so I, I just feel very disheartened and discouraged. And quite honestly, as a professional who carves time out of my day, I think the city needs to know like, I ain't volunteering for this if you're just going to have me like wheel me out to to say, oh, I think like what we're all saying, like, oh, yes, this would be great to have another affordable housing project. Right. Give me a break. So Spoken I'm, like I'm going to stop ranting, but I, that just <laughs> pissed me off. The other thing is, like, I mean, realistically, I, I don't really know what percentage of people that are living here or who have lived here for years and years and generations. Um, I, I mean, I'm not even sure what percentage is in that percentage range that could afford anything more than moderate um, income. You know, it's not like we are not Silicon Valley. Um, we're not Boston. Um, and I don't mean to offend anybody by that, but at the same time, um, you know, we have people who work on farms or have, you know, small businesses and, you know, cater to the tourist industry. Um, and, you know, I mean, it seems like, um, you know, when I watched the, the that meeting from 20, I think it was 2022, I vaguely remember sitting in on that meeting. I think there was another one as well. But at that time, it seemed like, you know, there's no question that we need to have affordable housing. And then also it's the inclusive zoning. I think that's another thing. Um, but, you know, maybe we do just need to um, look at the mission, uh, you know, double down, I guess, um, on um, like, you know, there's like, you know, the top 10% and then there's the rest of everybody. So there's school teachers, mailmen, um, people that work at Dunkin' Donuts, people that work, you know, in little shops who may not necessarily be store owners. There's, um, 
you know, a, a, a building industry, if they want to, the, to build more, then it might be good to have some housing. But I, I just, um, you know, I have a hard time with there being, you know, like sometimes the land land will come up for sale and I see it and it's like, well, we don't want to put anything there because we want to preserve the environment, which if anybody knows me, you know that I totally support that. But I think there's a way that we can have both. So, um, yeah, I just, um, I do feel kind of sad um, about um, what, sh what they're saying about the maintenance of the housing trust fund. The other thing that comes to my mind is the housing bond bill. You know, there's like money coming forth into our communities. Um, and, you know, it would be nice to be able to put that into the housing, any money that might come our way from the housing bond bill. It seems like I see money through the legislator getting passed down to housing and it all just goes to administrative. It almost, very little of it goes directly towards actual support for housing. And I don't want that to happen with this housing bond bill. And, um, and also, um, you know, I really do want to dig a little more deeply into that 2018 report. I think there are a lot of issues there that renters bring up and, you know, okay, well, you know, maybe renters are not taxpayers, but we still contribute a lot to the economy. And, um, and you know, some of us have excise taxes, you know, that's tax. <laughs> but, um, and also, I just realized last week that we actually have a local tax. Um, the city of Northampton charges a local tax um, and I don't, I assume it's for the whole city, but um, not every town and city does that. So I don't know when that was decided, but um, you know, I just don't really see how it should be such a big problem. And I guess the other thing is like, okay, so we're not gonna have the housing trust fund, um, you know, and I guess the question is like, why 10% of CPC is set aside for housing? I, maybe it should be higher. So those are some of my thoughts. Yeah, thank you, Gwen. Uh, Keith. Yeah, thank you. Um, so thank you everyone for your candor uh, with uh, Carolyn. Uh, and I think um, I did not talk to Carmen. Um, so I just got the debrief um, how Carolyn talked to you about uh, Carmen's departure. But uh, I think her departure, um, you know, caused Carolyn and I to discuss the level of support that I give to you all and then my updates to Carolyn. I don't update Carolyn and every single thing we're working on, but we want, me and her want to have a kind of a, a better dialogue. Uh, but, you know, my my request to you all is I'm your staff person. And so if you need more support, um, you know, please let me know. I want you to be honest. I prefer just direct statements like what you need. You know, I'm happy to do things. And I think uh, since I started, I've kind of let more of the um, chair and things like that kind of lead the discussion. Uh, but I am here for you all. Um, and so some of the stuff hurts me because I'm like, okay, I failed you all in some way. Um, but I want to be better. And so whatever you all need. So second to that about um, not getting an answer back. I took, I'm taking minutes, but from what I'm hearing is you want um, a better understanding of your mission. So I will do my best to reach out to Carol and the mayor and you know, there is a mission statement or the enabling legislation on, you know, what the partnership is. Um, but it seems like there needs to be more verbiage about that. So uh, I, I definitely think that uh, just from the tenor of the conversation, then that uh, you all deserve um, a little more um, guidance before the next meeting. Um, I would hate to see any of you all go. I love your brains. I love the experience you all bring. Um, so please don't go. But Bev, you had a hand up. Um, I feel really bad that you feel that way, Keith. Um, 
it certainly was not my intent in any of what I said. You are responsive and responsible and timely. And bottom line is, unless your job is different than what I understand, you don't make the rules. <laughs> so please don't wear this on your shoulders. Uh, I feel like you've been a great partner to us. Um, I, I do think that we've all been put in kind of an awkward position because on the one hand, you know, this housing partnership thing exists. Um, on the other hand, I'm sh not at all sure that there are many people who understand why or have a s common sense of why. Um, and I guess we all have to decide collectively whether we want to give it a, a go at trying to frame a role for us um, that is meaningful to us and hopefully anybody else like us that might come along and, and volunteer. Um, and is that time well spent? Because I can't think of a, another way that I want to spend time <laughs> um, going forward. So uh, certainly any any feedback you can get from Carolyn or anybody else, that's great and useful information. But um, again, I support uh, having this be our number one agenda item for the next meeting. If if you want, I um, and I know others may feel the same way. If there's a little committee that might want to try and frame the 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 way we talk about this, so that we can get something done in what at the end of the day is a short period of time, I'd certainly be happy to contribute to that. Um, is there anyone um, interested in in taking this on um, for before our next meeting? Um, or should we uh, just really think about this well, and have it? Oh, go ahead, Gordon. I was just thinking before we even think about putting a committee together. I was just thinking about what the end game is. Thinking about what what's been said by Bev and and and, and Spencer and others about trying to define who we are, but much less less so who we are. I think you know the enabling legislation ordinance states what our what our role is, and I think what we really want to come out of this next between now and our next meeting or at our next meeting is some sort of statement of who, of what we, what we are doing. And we want, if it's the mayor, maybe it's the, it's the chair of the city council, sending it to them saying, this is what we are doing. And this is what we want your, we want to know what you, if you support us. And if, if so, what are you going to do to help enable these things? And we've, we have so many different balls in the air that we haven't really been able to bring anything to closure. And it's, fr and that's, what's frustrating. We keep talking about these things and getting updates and nothing ever moves forward. So I think that's where we're, end we're going to end up. Not so much if we write our own job description, but, but we write, what is our, this is our agenda. And do you share it with us? Yeah, so I just want to say something quickly. I see I see a couple of hands up there. Is that we've also I just want to remind us that we we have also seen a lot of change in the last few years in the housing partnership, um, not just the membership but also structure because um, you know ever since um, uh, uh, Peg retired um, and um, um, uh, Keith came in, we weren't always necessarily under the planning department. I don't know if, we, if that's the right way to say it, um, but we have we have um, had some, some changes and I think we've been trying to navigate um, those changes and seeing how, how to best move forward. So I think the fact that we're having this conversation uh, is really healthy. Um, I appreciate everyone bringing up their concerns. Um, and, um, and and I think the time is right to uh, to address these things in a responsible way um, and, and keeping in mind that um, uh, I think we all want the same thing here, including Carolyn and the mayor and the city council uh, is to um, improve our, our, our low income and um, uh, affordable housing stock in, in the city and try to close that gap uh, in the crisis. But um, Richard and then Hannah. I think Hannah was first. Go ahead, Hannah, if you want. Sorry. Oh, I think you were first, Richard. But um, I'll I'll be quick. I uh, 
was wondering if at the next meeting where we talk about goals, I'd really be interested in hearing from some of the longstanding members of the committee uh, about what what some of the just like kind of like the high points are for you, like moments that maybe you remember the committee like working really well or having projects that everybody was really inspired by. Because I mean, Richard, you say you've been here 34 years of when I've been here since 2020. I guess that's just still make me like a very new member. So I would be really interested in just hearing like what what has really worked and because I, I imagine that there's things that I'm not even imagining that we can do or or based on projects the um, partnership has taken on the in the past. So I didn't want to surprise anybody with that question in the next meeting or put anybody on the spot, but that's something that I would be really interested in hearing from Gordon and Richard. And then also, I mean, Bev, I know that you work in housing. Melissa, I think you work in housing too. So also just people who work, you know, ad adjacent in housing. Um, that That would be really interesting to me and helpful. Yes, thank you, Hannah. Um, I wanted to, again, I think Gordon was right on point. I don't know if he had to leave. No, he's there. Um, Keith, it would be great to hear what the mayor thinks our role is and what Carolyn thinks our role is. But ultimately, our role is, you know, what the ordinance says, how we choose to interpret it, how we choose to advocate for it. And then it is of paramount importance how much uh, we're in accord with the mayor and the planning director because they can thwart whatever it is that we want to do. And that's where we want to know. And that speaks to what Bev and Spencer and, and all of us are thinking, you know, is there a place for us? So, um, I think we want the input from them, but I think we have to chart our own uh, vision and I think we need to do it quickly. And then I think we need to do exactly what Gordon said is, you know, this is how we see ourselves. You know, can you provide the support and um, mechanisms for us to have that role? And if not, then we probably, you know, need to go to the city council perhaps as a group and say, you know, the city has prided itself on the housing partnership and held it out as as a paragon. And we've been lauded by, you know, the city in, in its dealings with the state of having an active housing partnership and saying, you know, it's not working. And, uh, you know, you're going to have to deal with the repercussions of it. And it's is this the direction you really want to go? But I, I think I think we do have a plan. I don't think we're waiting for a real response right at this moment from the city, although I would welcome thoughts on what they think. But I think our job is to to do that. I'm I'm completely stressed out now with my own stuff, but I will certainly work with and, and spend some time as much as I can with a group between now and our next meeting if we want to do it. I, I I don't know about all the open meeting and whatever, but I would probably have to do it on Zoom. So, and you guys are great. You know, we're we're in difficult waters, and you're slogging in the trenches in a in a complicated situation. Uh, thank you so much, Richard. I think we can all um, um, uh, agree with that. Uh, uh, Gwen. Uh, I just want to say, as you might know, I always miss missing out on things, but this is my last month um, to finish my semester and I'm graduating on May 19th. So this next month is the busiest month, probably, well, maybe not in my entire life, but it is very, very busy. And um, I'm also moving today. So um, <laughs> things are a little wild, but I mean, Anytime anyone wants to engage in conversation or have any questions for me, or if there's any way I can support any of this, you know, I could probably, you know, I'd, I'd like to get a copy of the charter or the whatever it is that we have our mission statement and like take a look at that and any way that I can help. Thanks. I think uh, Keith put it in the chat. Okay. Um, yes, thank you, Keith. Um, 
And uh, thank you, Gwen, so much. Congratulations. Um, you are um, an inspiration. Um, I've met you when you first came here uh, into the city and the things that you've been able to do, uh, not only to advance uh, uh, your own education and do and advance yourself, but the amount of time and effort you have put into the community to help a, a number of different projects take off um, it's a real inspiration to me. And so um, I thank you for all that and I acknowledge you. And, uh, and like I say, you're, you're an inspiration um, and partly uh, part of the reason why I'm going back to school. So um, I will talk a little bit more about that. Um, but uh, I see Spencer with his hands up. Uh, I just want to be real quick because I know we all have to leave, but it's both my crazy busy time, but I'm also happy to help out. And I'd also like to just say, Keith, you're wonderful. I don't think anybody here is criticizing you. Um, but I also want to point out, listen, if if we're going to get from the city council that this is your mission, stick to it. I also want to know to how to be the biggest pain in the backside to anything that goes on possible. Because if if they're not going to listen to us, I want us to at least be able to have a voice and be able to go to say to city council, look, you want to do this? You don't have our approval. We're not just a rubber stamp committee. You know, we need to be able to have some teeth as opposed to, we're kind of like a token committee from what I'm hearing. And, you know, I, why waste our time, right? But, okay, I'm going to stop ranting, but no, that's all. I agree. I agree. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. Um, so um, uh, so then I'm thinking, do we move to our next um, uh, agenda item? Um, I just feel like the, the next couple of things on the agenda item here are things that perhaps we can take on next uh, next meeting based on you know the time and and it's just it's been a lot. It's been a lot to process this meeting and um, I would just if I can if anyone, agrees and would like to make a motion to table the next couple of topics or um uh, go ahead gordon i was just gonna say i think we have to but there's an option to, to unless people want to stick around for another half hour but i i just want to clarify the agenda item that you're looking either for, for are we looking for a new chair or are we just looking for a new vice chair your your comments a little earlier about whether you might be pulling back suggest that you might be looking to resign as well. So I just want to make, if that is the case, and we need to make that clear and people should think about whether who wants to step up. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, no, at this point in time, I actually was not looking to step up in my roles here. I was actually uh, looking to wind down. I'm going to be taking some classes in the summer, but then I'm going full, full force in, in the fall. Um, and so I am happy to, to you know, uh, fill this role as as long as necessary. I'm not like leaving next month. Um, so I would definitely encourage other folks to think about uh, chairing and vice chairing uh, this committee. And and um, I am always uh, around. In fact, you might actually see more of me, um, but uh, just not in this role. Um, I, I feel like for the next 15, 20 years, I want to be boots on the ground. And then once I get, I don't have as much energy and I feel like I have a little bit more exp expertise to share, then I'll come back and I'm glad to uh, to help out. But there's no urgency, um, but I also look at the at, at, at everyone in this room and any one person can really, you know, feel this role. It's all about who's got the time, who's got the willingness um, and ability to do it. Um, so, uh, based on that, do we want to, um, yeah, so do we have a motion to uh, table these things and, and is that okay? Can, can folks think about um, uh, possibly stepping up into um, one of these roles? Motion to table. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Hi. Hi. All right. So um, if that's the case, and uh, if there are there any announcements, any special announcements before we we adjourn, then um, I would just um, ask for one one final motion. 
Motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. Aye. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. All right. Good night.